And the rebounding economy, the spotlight is on the Fed this week. And the big question is, when will it consider unwinding its easy policies? For more on this, let's bring in Michelle Schneider. She's a partner and director of research and education at marketgage.com. And Boobus co-host Christy I. Thank you both for being here. Uh, Michelle, I want to start with you. Uh, what do you expect to hear Wednesday? And, and what are the big highlights investors are looking for? And, and how do they think the market will react to Federal Chair Jerome Powell and his minutes? Well, we can look at the reaction of the market today, and what we saw was the yields in terms of the short term go up again, yet the Nasdaq shaking it off a little bit, since that's the most yield sensitive right here, and closing high on the day, but not high enough for it to clear the 50-day moving average. So I think there's some level of optimism and skepticism, a combination. In terms of what we're looking at for the Fed, they're clearly going to stay accommodative. They're going to keep the federal funds rate near zero. They're probably going to stay at least for the next couple of years um, and replace that with securities purchases. But whether or not they address the two hotbed subjects right now, which are those yields based on inflation expectations, I think that's what could drive the market one way or another tomorrow. At this point, Powell, of course, has been very dismissive of inflation, saying that he expects it to be very, very transient in terms of if it even appears. Um, yet at the same time now, uh, people are worried about a rate hike coming up if inflation does indeed get out of control. So I think what the market's going to want to hear most tomorrow is what he's going to do about these short-term yields. Is he just going to let them go? Will there be a point? Will he talk about Operation Twist? So it's more what he doesn't say. In essence, that might be more important than what he actually does say. And Chrissy, what, what about you? What are you expecting out of Jerome Powell on Wednesday? Well, most likely we will get some sort of communication saying that it's still too early to change plans for interest rates and bond purchases. I mean, he's repeatedly in recent weeks said that he wants substantial further progress in the recovery before the central bank actually begins scaling back its $120 billion a month in bond purchases. So meanwhile, we don't really expect the Fed to raise rates until its goal of maximum unemployment and sustained 2% inflation have been reached. And that's still a long ways away from where we're at now. This was something that took a decade to achieve following the global financial crisis back in 2008. So these are the expectations, but as we can see from the market movements, investors are still a little skittish as they rotate out of the high-flying tech names. And this is reflected in the spike in government debt yield, particularly the 10-year Treasury notes, which is often kind of the canary in the coal mine for coming price increases. And this could lead to some very real-world consequences for people since lending rates for home mortgages and car loans, they're linked to them. So mortgage rates, they've already begun to creep up, which could price some buyers out of an already hot housing market, while existing homeowners will also find it harder to refinance their loans. And investors, of course, will also want some reassurances from the Fed that inflation is still under control and that the central bank will use all of its tools to address any worrying price increases in bond yield spikes. So far, Powell has been non-committal about specifics in terms of what tools he has left at his disposal. And now, Michelle, I want to kind of switch gears here for a second. SPACs have been hot over the last 12 months as these initial offerings quadrupled last year to 248. Uh, but it looks like short sellers are increasingly betting against SPACs. What's the story there? Well, it's like anything else that's new. You have to really be able to discern between which SPACs are legitimate and which SPACs are putting out there just fishing for money. So, for example, one of the best trades that we did this year, or really coming into 2020, was FAC, which turned into a mountain pass, which was a SPAC that was based on rare earth mineral mine in California. Literally, that went from 11 up to 55. So that one was a really good one. Churchill, which is dealing with Lucid Motors, is starting to come its own way. And today we had the announcement of eToro, which is the crypto platform, which to the tune of $10.4 billion evaluation with fintech acquisition went up a couple of percent on its uh, on its basically debut today. So I think that you have to really understand what you're getting into, whether or not it's in an area that's actually legitimate, and try to do as much research as you can. But I wouldn't just necessarily say, ah, fads over, time to short sell it, because that can get you into a lot of trouble as well. It does require a modicum of thought and research. And Christy, I want to 